In an age when art and science were two worlds apart, one man dared to bridge the divide. His name, Leonardo da Vinci. You might know him for the enigmatic Mona Lisa or the Last Supper, but did you know this Renaissance genius was also the mastermind behind inventions centuries ahead of their time? From the skies to the battlefield, from melody to mechanics, Leonardo's touch was everywhere. Hold on to your seats because we're about to dive deep into the labyrinth of history, unveiling 15 of da Vinci's groundbreaking creations. Number 15, the aerial screw, da Vinci's sky spinner. Picture this, Italy, Renaissance era. Among artists, poets, and inventors, one genius stands out, Leonardo da Vinci. Now, when most folks were busy painting or sculpting, Da Vinci doodled flying machines in his notebook. And one of his wildest ideas, the aerial screw, basically the great-great-granddaddy of the helicopter. Imagine a big spiral or corkscrew made out of linen with some wiry bones to give it shape. It's like a giant spinning top, but for the sky. Leonardo's idea was pretty simple but super cool. Get four strong guys to turn a crank, make the screw spin super fast, and voila, it might just lift off the ground. The spinning would squash the air below and up it would go. All right, let's be real. Nobody knows if this contraption would have actually worked. It's kind of like trying to fly with a giant umbrella, but that's not the point. It's about da Vinci's wild imagination. At a time when the concept of mechanical flight was relegated to fantasies and folklore, da Vinci dared to sketch possibilities. Long before drones and choppers, this guy was daydreaming of vertical flight. So, even if the aerial screw was just a fancy sketch, it's a fun reminder of da Vinci's relentless spirit of invention. He was always dreaming big, pushing boundaries, and thinking way, way outside the box. Thanks to da Vinci, the next time you see a helicopter whirring above, you'll know where the spark first started, with a Renaissance man and his twisty, turny flying dream. Number 14, the armored vehicle, da Vinci's war turtle. Italy in the 15th century, battlegrounds were wild and messy with soldiers fighting and clashing yet in a quiet corner leonardo da vinci the ultimate inventor was about to shake things up dive into his notebooks and you stumble on this game changer a sketch of a big bad armored vehicle think of it as the first ever tank but with a quirky twist it looked kind of like a turtle only armored on wheels and ready for a fight instead of a slow poke this turtle was fierce Imagine being on a smoky battlefield, everything's loud, intense, and out of the haze rolls out da Vinci's beast. Loaded with cannons and designed to move and turn in every direction, it was like Leo combined an armored knight, a ship, and a carousel. But here's the kicker. Beyond being just a war machine, this armored vehicle was da Vinci dreaming out loud. He was flipping the script on traditional warfare. While folks were swinging swords and launching arrows, Leonardo was drafting the future of mechanized combat. It wasn't just about power. It was about blending tech with tactics in a way only he could imagine. So even if this bad boy never hit the battlefield, it's a peek into da Vinci's genius brain. An armored war turtle? Only Leonardo could dream that up. Every time you see a modern tank, just think where it all began. Number 13. The Animometer. Da Vinci's Wind Whisperer. Close your eyes. Feel that? The gentle breeze, ruffling your hair, carrying tales from faraway lands. But what if you could catch that breeze and listen to its tales? Well, Leonardo da Vinci was on it. On a dreamy day in Italy, standing atop a breezy hill, Leonardo wasn't just enjoying the wind. He was trying to chat with it. Enter the anemometer, a funky gadget with four swirly arms, each carrying a little plate. It might look like a windmill's baby cousin, but trust me, it's way cooler. To folks passing by, it might have looked like Leonardo was playing with a toy. But for him, oh boy, he was listening to the Earth's whispers, measuring the very breath of our planet. It wasn't just about numbers and speed, it was like being a detective of nature's deepest secrets. The wind, all mysterious and wild, was like the Earth's untamed spirit. And our main man, with his trusty anemometer, was all set to decode its secrets. Every spin of that device wasn't just data. It was a dance, a fusion of art, science, and pure wonder. Picture Leonardo with his spinning buddy, feeling the breeze and nodding along like he's just heard the juiciest piece of gossip. Leonardo wasn't just an inventor. He was the original wind whisperer. Number 12, the scuba suit, Leonardo's deep dive dare. 
back to the mesmerizing Mediterranean. Sunlight bouncing off its waves, hiding the ocean's deep secrets. But guess who wasn't content just chilling on the beach? Our main man, Leonardo. Yep, while most were daydreaming of sunny days, Leonardo's mind was diving deep into the water, looking for a way to uncover its treasures. Enter his wild idea, the very first scuba suit. Picture explorers wrapped in snug leather suits, sporting long, reedy tubes like snorkels. It might have looked a little goofy, like Renaissance aqua ninjas. But this was da Vinci's way of giving a big thumbs up to underwater adventure. Crowds would have gawked, jaws dropped, seeing these brave souls ready to jump into the deep blue unknown. But it wasn't just about splashing around. Leonardo's suit was his challenge to nature. Hey, ocean, you can't keep your secrets from us. He was making a bold statement, showing that with a dash of creativity and a sprinkle of bravery, humans could tackle any frontier, sky, land, or sea. Sure, da Vinci's suit wasn't as fancy as today's scuba gear, but it was epic in its spirit. It was like telling everyone, if you dream it, you can do it. Every time you see a diver exploring the deep, remember it started with a genius in Italy, sketching out dreams and turning them into splashy, groundbreaking realities. Number 11. The Self-Propelled Cart, Leonardo's Dream Machine. Let's travel back in time to the Renaissance streets of Florence. Horses clip-clopping, carriages bustling, and amidst all this, Leonardo da Vinci had a dream. A dream of a world where vehicles had minds of their own. With just a quill, parchment, and his unmatched imagination, Leonardo sketched the blueprint of what we might call the grandfather of the car. Yep, you heard that right. Before engines and fuel, Leonardo dreamt of a wooden cart, moving all by itself, powered not by horses, but by tightly coiled springs. Imagine the scene, people in the market square stopping mid-haggle, jaws dropping as this horseless wonder zipped by. This wasn't just any cart, it had all the cool stuff, a steering system, brakes, and get this, it could even change direction on its own. While Leonardo's buddies were busy painting and sculpting statues, he was cooking up the future in his workshop. Unfortunately, the streets of Florence never saw this prototype in action during Leonardo's days. But here's the kicker. When modern engineers took a crack at his design centuries later, it worked. That's right. Our man Leo was ahead of the curve by miles. This wasn't just a quirky invention. Nope. It was a peek into the future, a sneak preview of a world where machines rule the roads. Every time you hop into a car, remember Leonardo's cart the OG dream machine that whispered of a world revved up by innovation and sheer genius. Number 10. The Revolving Bridge, Leonardo's Swiveling Masterstroke. Hop on the time machine and let's zip back to the Renaissance. Wars and battles everywhere, and armies are always on the move. Getting your troops across a river? Big challenge. Leaving a bridge behind for enemies to chase you? Even worse. Enter Leonardo da Vinci, ever the problem solver, with an idea so cool it'll make your head spin. Literally. He dreamed up the revolving bridge. Imagine a bridge, but not your everyday stuck-in-one-place kind. This bad boy could swivel around like a dancer doing the twist. Made of lightweight wood and resting on floaty pontoons, it was the Swiss Army knife of bridges. Troops could scamper across, and with a quick swivel, BAM! The bridge turns away, leaving any chasing enemies scratching their heads. This wasn't just Leonardo showing off his engineering muscles. Nope, it was strategy and smarts combined. He saw a problem, armies needing a quick getaway, and came up with a genius solution. While we don't see many revolving bridges around today, the spirit of Leonardo's invention lives on. Temporary stages, pop-up structures, and even some modern military equipment have a touch of da Vinci's genius in them. So when we are seeing portable structures today, we need to tip our hat to Leonardo, the man who loved giving things a clever twist. Number 9. The Giant Crossbow, Leonardo's Gigantic Gadget. Ah, uh, cue dramatic music and imagine zooming in on a peaceful Italian courtyard. Birds chirping, artists painting, but wait, what's that in the distance? A shadow looms, and it's none other than Leonardo da Vinci's monstrous masterpiece. The giant crossbow. This wasn't just any old crossbow. This was a whopping 27-yard long beast, built to make enemies shake in their boots. Picture this. It's like the cool big brother of all crossbows, flexing its muscles, ready to launch massive arrows or even hefty stones. But here's the twist. It's not all about muscles and might. This giant is also about brains. 
The design showcases Leo's smarty pants understanding of physics and mechanics. Those gears, pulleys, and strings weren't just for show. They were a ballet of precision and control. Now here's the juicy bit. Even with such an intimidating design, there's some chit-chat that our man Leonardo might have never wanted it built. Shocking, right? While the sketches scream power, the real Leonardo might have been whispering peace. Some folks think he wasn't all that keen on real-life battles and bloodshed. Maybe, just maybe, this colossal crossbow was his way of flexing his brain power, not really aiming to launch anything into battle. Whether it was meant to be a weapon of war or just a genius doodle, one thing's for sure. It shaped the art of war forever and made even modern inventors speechless. Number 8. The Robotic Knight. Leonardo's Metallic Robot. Let's zap back to an era where the word robot would have probably sounded like a type of pasta dish. Everyone's in tights. There's art, drama, and then Leonardo da Vinci unveiling his creation, the robotic knight. Instead of wires and batteries, Leo's robot was all about gears, wheels, and super cool joints, mimicking human anatomy. Da Vinci's deep study of the human body allowed him to emulate human-like movement in the night. He wanted to replicate human motion. And boy, did he come close. Picture walking into a royal party and amidst all the dancing and jesting, there stands a metallic dude, making moves, raising its visor, and flexing its arms. Minds blown. But here's the twist. For Leo, this wasn't some mystical sorcery. Nah, it was the science of the future, served Renaissance style. But why, you ask? At the heart of it, Leonardo was a performer, an entertainer, this night likely had its debut at some Milanese court event, a marvel for the elites of the day. It's like bringing a hologram to a 20th century party. But also, on a profounder level, he was challenging the boundaries of what was achievable, teasing the line between living and lifelike. Though there's no record of it being used in battle, the robotic knight was a precursor to modern robotics and automation. While today's robots are more silicon than steel, Leo's idea showcased that even centuries ago, people dreamt of machines doing human-like tasks. Dig deeper, and it's Leo wondering aloud, what makes something truly alive? How close can we get to mimicking human life? And what wild adventures await us at the crossroads of man and machine? Number seven, the viola organista, Leo's musical masterpiece. Pop quiz, what happens when you cross the vibes of a harpsichord with the soul of a cello? if you said, uh, a hybrid super instrument. Jackpot, you're thinking like Leonardo da Vinci. Welcome to the soundscapes of Renaissance Italy, where our man Leo was about to drop a musical bombshell, the viola organista. Here's the scene. Musicians are already jamming on lutes and harpsichords, but Leo, he's thinking bigger. He's dreaming of an instrument that packs the punch of an entire orchestra. So he conjures up this magical hybrid. But why? Leonardo, with his insatiable curiosity, observed the mechanics of string instruments and keyboard instruments. He was keen on enhancing musical expression, and he wondered, could one instrument capture the essence of both? His viola organista was the answer, a device where pressing keys would cause bows to rub against strings, much like a musician's fingers on a cello or violin. Now, what made it so special? While other instruments of the time were limited in their tonal range and expression, the viola organista had the ability to sustain notes, change volume, and produce rich harmonies, a rarity in those days. But this wasn't just about tunes. For Leonardo, it was the ultimate duet between art and science. In one corner, you have precise engineering, and in the other, the ethereal beauty of music. The viola organista, then, is more than an instrument. It's a symphony of Leonardo's genius, a fusion of intellect and imagination. Number six, ornithopters. Leonardo's Birdman Dreams. Ever wished you could just spread your arms and take flight? Well, join the club. Leonardo had this very dream. Enter the ornithopter, a fancy word for what's basically a human bird machine. Now imagine this. Bustling streets of 15th century Italy, artists painting, sculptors chiseling, and then there's Leo furiously sketching away, having wild dreams of humans soaring amidst birds. Over 200 sketches were made, and these weren't your kindergarten doodles. They were detailed blueprints of a machine inspired by birds, bats, and even the playful glide of kites. This wasn't just strapping feathers to arms and hoping for the best. Nope, the ornithopter was engineering wizardry. It had a frame, 
flapping wings, and intricate controls. Leonardo, playing Mother Nature's apprentice, wanted to unlock the secret of flight by observing how birds maneuvered and adapted their wings to changing winds. All right, reality check. The ornithopter never left the ground in Leo's time. Bummer, right? But it wasn't about the destination. It was the journey. The ornithopter was a bold idea that represented human ambition, our desire to break free from earthly limitations and to touch the skies. Each sketch, each concept was Leonardo's ode to nature's wonders and humanity's relentless spirit of innovation. Number five, the clock, Leonardo's ticking moment. All right, gather around history enthusiasts. Ever glanced at a clock and thought, hmm, how can I make this better? No, well, Leonardo did. Classic Leo, am I right? Now let's time travel to the Renaissance, where most clocks were like that grandpa who forgets where he left his glasses. A bit unreliable. These weight-driven time tellers were the best tech available, but our main man Leonardo saw some room for upgrades. Enter the spring. Yep, that springy little thing. Leonardo had this eureka moment. Why not replace weights with springs? This wasn't just for show. Springs promised smoother ticks and more accurate talks, ensuring that you wouldn't miss your dinner date. But wait, there's more. Leonardo, being the overachiever he was, didn't stop at hours and minutes. Oh no, he added a dial showcasing lunar phases, marrying earthly time with the dance of the heavens. Talk about going above and beyond. Peek inside Leo's clock, and it's like watching a ballet of gears and springs, all orchestrated to keep impeccable time. From diamonds to everyday rocks, he married luxury with utility creating a clock that was both functional and fabulously fancy. So the next time you're racing against the clock or just admiring one on your wall, give a little nod to Leonardo. He didn't just see time ticking away. He saw an opportunity to innovate, ensuring each tick and tock was a testament to the power of human imagination. Time's up, but Leonardo's legacy, timeless. Number four, the parachute, taking the plunge with Leonardo. Imagine you're in a workshop, chilling with Leonardo, you mention jumping off a tower for fun, and he's like, hold my quill, I got you. Enter the parachute, a contraption so wild in Leo's time, it would have been the medieval version of bungee jumping. Before adrenaline junkies had skydiving on their bucket lists, the idea of jumping off and floating down was like telling someone you could teleport. Pure wizardry. Leonardo's sketch pad reveals a design that's more pyramid, and less the round shoots we know today. Made of linen and supported by a wooden frame, it's like an early bird's version of an umbrella. And the theory? The wide base of the pyramid would give a smooth and stable descent. No twirling and tumbling, just a classy float down. In Leo's own words, with a tent-like design, you could jump from a crazy height and land without a scratch. Can you imagine the look on the faces of his buddies? Leonardo, you want to do what? While today's parachutes look different, the main idea remains the same. Use air resistance to gently kiss the ground instead of a crash landing. So next time you see someone gracefully floating down with a parachute, give a shout out to Leonardo, the original king of the skies who believed we could all have a safe landing. Number three, the calculator, crunching numbers with Leonardo. All right, math magicians and number nerds, gather round. Picture this, you're in the 1500s, quills are scratching on parchment and suddenly, Leonardo da Vinci, the Renaissance rock star, goes, what if we had a machine to do the math? Yes, we're talking about a calculator, and Leo was sketching up designs for this bad boy when people were still counting on their fingers or using abaci. He was out there creating futuristic tech when the rest of the world was just getting the hang of Renaissance art. His designs, which were lost and only found in the 1950s, weren't some simple sketches. Oh no, we're talking about detailed, intricate drafts showcasing gears and levers and hinting at a prototype that mirrored today's calculators. Classic Leonardo, a true genius at work. Though the world never saw a working model of Leo's calculator during his time, it proves just how ahead of his time he was. While others were marveling at the hues of a sunset, Leonardo was daydreaming about a future where machines would solve equations, making our lives a walk in the park. Every time you punch in numbers on your calculator, remember, it's Leonardo you have to thank for envisioning a world where math would be a piece of cake. Number two, the mechanical drum, beatboxing with Leonardo. Close your eyes and imagine a world where the thumping beat of drums isn't dictated by the skill or stamina of a drummer. 
but by the impeccable precision of a machine. Enter Leonardo da Vinci's mechanical drum. This ain't your little grandma's drum. Designed to be carted around, this automated beatbox was the ultimate party starter in Renaissance Italy. Whether you were shaking a leg at a festival or marching with fellow soldiers, Leo's mechanical drum was setting the rhythm. But what made it so cool? Using a mind-blowing system of cams, this drum ensured that the beat never missed, never faltered, and never tired. It was like having a DJ who never took a break. The energy, the consistency, the precision. All classic Leo. Imagine being at a carnival and hearing the drum's rhythmic beats from afar, drawing you in like the Pied Piper's flute, or in a more somber setting, letting its resolute rhythm fuel the spirits of soldiers. This drum was Leonardo's way of ensuring the party never stopped, and neither did the courage. So the next time you jam to a beat, remember the Renaissance rock star Leonardo who gave us the first taste of automated rhythm. Number 1. The 33-Barreled Organ Leonardo's Symphony of War All right, brace yourselves for the last one. Leonardo da Vinci, the painter of the Mona Lisa, the master behind The Last Supper, also dreamt up one of the earliest rapid-fire weapons. Talk about a plot twist. In Renaissance Italy, a world that revered artistry and intellectual pursuits, warfare was an ever-present reality. Named evocatively after a musical instrument, the 33-barreled organ wasn't meant to serenade. Instead, it was designed to deliver a rapid succession of shots in the heat of battle. Traditional firearms of the era were cumbersome, slow to reload, and left soldiers vulnerable during the reloading process. Leonardo, as the innovator he was, recognized this flaw and envisioned a solution. By incorporating 33 barrels in sets of 11, he proposed a system where, as one set fired, another would be ready and another would be reloading. This rotational mechanism ensured a near-constant volley of shots, providing armies a significant advantage in the battlefield. Beyond the innovative design, what makes this creation remarkable is its representation of Leonardo's versatility. The very same hands that painted delicate expressions and captured human emotion on canvas also conceived of a machine meant for destruction. It was a testament to the complexities of human nature and the bizarre relationship between creation and destruction. As for its practical application, historical records do not indicate that the 33-barreled organ was ever constructed or used in actual combat during Leonardo's time. Given the technology and resources of the era, actualizing such a design would have been a considerable challenge. But whether it was built or not, its mere conceptualization showcased Leonardo's forward thinking and his ability to envision advancements far beyond the grasp of his contemporaries. Thus, while the world remembers da Vinci for his art, anatomy, and flying machines, the 33-barreled organ stands as a testament to his breadth of genius, a maestro who could effortlessly dance between the worlds of art, science, and warfare. 